From UFOs to psychic powers and government conspiracies, history is riddled with unexplained events. You can turn back now or learn the stuff they don't want you to know. And we have returned. We are journeying from Haiti to the Pacific coast of North America, uh, Canada specifically. If you live in the area or if you live in the West Coast in general, uh, well, unfortunately, if you live in many areas of the world today, uh, you know that there are record heat waves. They are leading to uh, disasters of nigh biblical proportions. Wildfires will tragically be uh, an example that a lot of people in the audience today have experienced firsthand. Quite recently, a heat dome settled over Western Canada and parts of the Northwestern United States. It was there for about five days. It pushed temperatures to over 104 degrees Fahrenheit for the rest of the world. That's around 40 degrees Celsius. And this was not completely unprecedented because temperatures have been rising over recent years, but it was, uh, it was unexpected. It shattered records that have been around for a long, long time. As many as 500 people in British Columbia alone are believed to have died as a direct result of this. Hundreds of wildfires are burning across the place as we record today. But something else happened, and it's something that... Um, it's something that I, I, I think deserves more attention. We'll explain why in a moment. About a billion sea animals, marine animals, died because of this heat. If you went out there recently, you would see you you would see tons and tons of creatures, mussels. They they were essentially cooked by the heat. And look, I'm I'm a fan of seafood. I will come clean. I have never said no to cooked mussels. Uh, this might be one of the only situations where I w would have had the moral fortitude to do so. Uh, I will always say no to mussels, clams, yeah, any of that stuff. You no, thank like the, you. You don't like the boogers of the sea? No. They're the boogers of the sea in their own individual packaging. <laughs> God. Gross. <laughs> you don't like you don't it's like, like sea monkeys. It makes me think of sea monkeys. <laughs> yes, yes. I'll do uh, baked oysters. I'll you'll do baked oysters. Okay, so you like your boogers baked? Put it <laughs> <laughs> that on. Put it on the that on the profile. It's on the air. All right, we'll keep it if <sighs> uh, if Doc lets us. But but this is. I mean, we're injecting some levity, but this is incredibly serious because. Like if you go to Vancouver, for instance, uh, temperatures were about 100 or so degrees Fahrenheit, but students and scholars used infrared cameras to measure the shore, and they found the temperatures were soaring to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. This means that first off, Matt, if, if I could continue grossing you out here, uh, this means that the entire place stank of rotting seafood yeah, uh, dude. worse than yeah everybody who smelled rotting seafood it's like that but much worse than you could imagine unless you were there snails sea stars clams they've been cooked by the water they are decaying uh this is uh apocalyptic stuff and it was so hot that when the researchers who discovered this, like Christopher Harley, a marine biologist at the University of BC, it was so hot that when uh, his group was looking at this disaster, they could only go out for small amounts of time. And then they had to run back into like the shade or some kind of more contained environment and eat frozen grapes to, in an attempt to physically cool their bodies down. We've That's insane. Yeah, and it's a loss of biodiversity that's that's very difficult to replace. And the reason I wanted to talk a little bit about this with everyone today is that anyone who's a fan of The Simpsons or internet memes probably remembers what I call the so far meme, right? It's ba it's like a little two-panel thing where Bart Simpson says something like, 
this is the hottest summer of my life. And then you can slot in anything. And the next panel is Homer stopping him and saying, the hottest summer of your life so far. Mm -hmm. That's what we're dealing with in a, in a very real way. This is not the first example of a mass die-off due to high temperatures, right? But it's, it's a different kind in specificity. And this means that it also is a harbinger, I would argue, of things to come. It seems like every, yeah, what would you say, guys? Every two, three months, a report comes out saying, oh, no, we're getting close. We're getting close to a tipping point. But the truth is that horse has left the barn. You know what I mean? That badger yeah. is out of the bag and it is we're, roaming we're in around. The, we're in the tipping phase now. We're just yeah, in we're, that thing. You can't see it when you're inside it because right. you're just there. We're well into the second act, I think. Yeah. And this, I don't know, what this makes me think of is the very real possibility that the majority of animal wildlife, including the stuff that humans eat, including the stuff that supports oxygen-breathing land animals, I, I, what, what I, I think we're facing a very real possibility that that population will be damaged heavily, will be decimated. A word that doesn't mean to destroy, it means to reduce by a certain factor. Yeah. Factor 10. Uh, well, there's yeah. reporting coming out of Florida right now, the manatees. The, yes. We, we've already, I forget exactly, I'm going to, I'll have to look it up really quickly, but I was just reading this morning about 841 manatee deaths that had just occurred between January 1st and July 2nd. Mm -hmm. um, which is, it's basically, it's breaking the previous record. Which was from 2013. Mm -hmm. So again, like we're kind of like inside this range. I don't know. Um, yeah. They're being called unusual mortality events, which okay. if you think about it, if you like thinking about language the way we do, uh, that is a very optimistic name, isn't it? Yeah. Because how, how long before these simply become mass die-off events, mass mortality events, or seasonal mass mortality events. Uh, and it's it's like the case, again, you know, it bears odd similarity to the case of Haiti because, you know, you're, you're telling people who maybe have never been to this part of the world why they should care, right? Mm -hmm. but how is this more than words I hear or words I read or clips of videos I watch? In the case of the oceans ecosystem and this this is not a hippy dippy thing to say in the case of the oceans ecosystem the majority of terrestrial life absolutely depends on it i mean you could say maybe maybe animals that live solely in caverns don't depend on it because <laughs> because they're like guano powered basically that's how yeah. they get their energy from the sun i i still remember uh when discovery was our was our corporate overlord uh matt noel and i all got a copy of uh what was it earth planet, planet earth planet. oh yeah we mm -hmm. also got honey boo boo uh notepads and cake boss cake mix that was <laughs> i took the cake mix yeah i skipped the boo boo i'm not a uh, child i'm not someone who proves a child pageantry but no. but yeah 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 we that's where we learned that the uh, yeah. cavern ecosystems of the world uh, are, are so Kinda unique, cut but, off. but so is the ocean. So I would want to ask you guys, that's why I brought this to the group today, uh, not just you, Noel and Matt, but uh, those of us listening along at home, what do you think the future of this brings? Do you think this is, um, do you think this is a, a tragic anomaly? Do you think this will become as many people fear and predict the new normal i'd love i'd love to hear you guys take on it uh do you want to you want to start no i've got a couple of things yeah. to say here i mean geez it just it just kind of seems like these types of stories keep escalating um in terms of you know like wildfires is getting worse and worse each year uh die-offs you know crop damage things like that i mean i just it, i I think it is the new normal. Yeah. I, I, and I don't see much human intervention uh, that's going to mitigate these kinds of things. Um, certainly, there are 
environmental controls that have been rolled back from having been eliminated, but it almost feels like a too little too late situation. I feel very, uh, very sad and feels very dire to me. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it feels extremely dire to me. There's reporting recently coming out about a massive lake in Antarctica that all of a sudden just drained because yes. of the situation of climate change. And I, I'm afraid to even say it because I know there's such pushback uh, against that word, against that concept. But, uh, you know, you look around, you look at the news and it's just I feel like it's screaming at me. And, and depending on where you lie politically, it becomes an issue. It's which also is a, the least divisive like term. It shouldn't be. It just means the climate is changing. You can feel it when you walk outside here in Georgia. Well, I mean, I don't know. How about this? It, it, take the word climate change out of it. Where the where temperatures are now where the climate in parts of the world sits terrible things are happening to life and to water resources i mean the droughts that are happening all over the planet if you look at like here's something insane death valley out in the western united states reached a temperature of 54.4 degrees celsius that's 130 degrees Fahrenheit, 130 degrees. And just for reference, a uh, wet bulb temperature, uh, the absolute, it's the measure of the absolute limit of human tolerance for this kind of heat is 95 degrees Fahrenheit or 35 degrees Celsius. So this is literally unlivable without the aid of technology. I'm also really glad you guys are bringing up the Machiavellian uh, politicization of phrases like climate change. Nature and the sun and all the all the large scale effects it, it do not care who you vote for. Yeah, absolutely not. Don't even think of it in those terms. Uh, the the world considers if the world has a consciousness, if you subscribe to the Gaia hypothesis, which is unproven but interesting, then. Uh, if the world had a mind, it would probably consider human beings a fad that got out of hand, right? Like, oh, primates were cool, but now, now they're a problem. And the reason we can say this is because the idea of climate change, how it entered into uh, this phase of becoming a hot button issue in the world of politics is itself a conspiracy. Back in the day, let us not forget uh, folks that would be considered quite conservative were also environmental conservatives. They were conservationists, right? right? They were responsible for some amazing strides in preserving the natural world in the U.S. in particular. And how did this conspiracy come about? Well, one of them was oil companies. We talked about this last mm -hmm. week. That act like oil conglomerations actively covered up the science after their own studies, the studies that they financed proved this was real and that uh, some increasingly hot stuff was about to hit the fan. So this concept, right, of the Anthropocene, the age of humanity, and uh, this concept of an inevitable change in the, in the natural world due to human intervention it has some pretty compelling science. And the people who discovered that science often treated it as the stuff they don't want you to know. I hate to use the tagline, like, you know, the moment in the movie where somebody says, hey, are those teenage mutant ninja turtles? But this is, this is very, very serious. And also, uh, the problem is compounded by the same corporations that have been actively lying to you if you are a living human being, the same corporations passing the buck, passing the burden of responsibility onto the individual. It does not matter how many straws you save. 
No. And, and it's the same thing with, you know, who killed the electric car. You know, we know who killed the electric car. It was automobile companies, you know, and oil companies. And, and the, there is collusion, even if on paper it doesn't exist. But um, again, I want to mention that movie I talked about a couple of weeks ago. Or God, I can't remember when. Uh, but No Sudden Move that's about this, um, you know, collusion between the big uh, Detroit auto manufacturers to uh, cover up scientific studies that showed that, um, you know, the catalytic converter was able to be made small enough to put into a car. <laughs> and um, it's something that, you know, makes a huge difference in pollution, but it was going to be expensive for them. So they were protecting their bottom line. And that's something that happens time and time again. Before you get back into it, I want to say I watched the movie after mm-hmm. you mentioned it, Noel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I actually really enjoyed it. So the the way we got there is that No Sudden Move, while not based on a true story, is based on um, on the idea of the big four conspiring, and that is based on the idea of corporations conspiring against the consumer for short term or mid term uh, profit. I will say that the I, I will say that the before I add the last point about. We're talking about earlier the um, the massive die off of marine animals in Western North America. Uh, I will say that I felt like No Sudden Moves dialogue uh, could have used a little polishing, but you guys know as a car conspiracy guy, I was I was all about it as well. And great acting, great acting, wow. Benicio. If you're in this, you know I'm not just saying it because we're both Bens. I thought you were kick ass in that. Agree. Uh, so back to this matter at hand uh, and. I will sew this up as uh, quickly as possible. Really, this is the point I was getting to. This is what I was trying to make. So corporations are passing this responsibility on to you in a massive swindle, to be quite honest. The reason I say it doesn't really matter how many straws you save is because commercial fisheries are responsible for much, much more plastic waste. Uh, And if you want to put politics aside, which is the important thing to do when you realize that you are the um, potential victim of a conspiracy like this, uh, the first thing you have to ask yourself is, do you plan to be alive in 2040 or 2050 when the marine ecosystems are projected to collapse entirely? Uh, that's that's a question that's up to you <laughs> on a case-by-case basis. I uh, would love to hear your take on this, especially because, as we said, we know it can be a hot-button issue for any number of reasons. Uh, so let us know what you think. one 833 conspiracy at iHeartRadio.com. We're going to pause for a word from our sponsors, and we'll return with more Strange News. Strange News. 